This podcast is about the integumentary system. I'm Ms. Vital, and it is intended for my AP Biology students. Would you be enticed by an advertisement for a coat that is waterproof, stretchable, washable, permanent press, invisibly repairs small cuts, rips, and burns, and is guaranteed to last a lifetime? That's what your skin does for you. Your skin is also called your cutaneous membrane. The integumentary system consists of skin, sweat and oil glands, hair, and nails. Your skin provides protection. First of all, it is a barrier from pathogens. Things like bacteria and viruses oftentimes cannot penetrate your skin. Your Langerhans cells in the skin are the first thing to attack viruses. In addition, your skin is a physical barrier against bumps and injuries. Your skin also is one of your major sense organs. It contains a variety of nerve endings that jump to heat and cold, adjusting your internal environment to the external environment. Your skin also has pressure receptors and can sense things like vibration. Your skin helps to he regulate heat. It increases sweating and heat loss while constricting vessels greatly reduce the cutaneous blood flow and conserve heat. Erector pili muscles are significant in animals. When those contract, goosebumps arise, releasing heat from the contraction of those little muscles, helping to warm you up. Control of evaporation is another function of the skin. The skin provides a relatively dry and semi-impermeable barrier, barrier to fluid loss, so it helps to prevent you from drying out. Your skin also insulates and cushions. The fat or subcutaneous fat underneath your skin helps to keep you warm and maintain a constant internal body temperature, especially in colder environments and it also helps to cushion you against injuries. When we look at the structure of the skin, we notice that the skin is made of two kinds of tissues, the outer epidermis. The outer epidermis is made of stratified squamous epithelium. It's capable of keratinizing, which means that as the cells push towards the surface, they fill with a hard waterproof protein called keratin. That causes a hard and tough outer layer even though our skin hopefully is soft to the touch, those individual cells are hard and waterproof. The oils in our, skins makes it, the oils in our skin makes it feel supple. The epidermis is firmly connected to the dermis. The dermis is the second layer of skin. It is mostly dense connective tissue. If a burn or causes the epidermis to separate from the dermis. Interstitial fluid accumulates between the two layers and this forms a blister. Oftentimes rubbing together can cause the epidermis and the dermis to separate, forming a space where that fluid builds up and a blister forms. The hypodermis is the subcutaneous tissue. It is composed of adipose tissue or fat it is not part of the skin, but it anchors the skin. The skin also contains melanocytes, which are special cells in the epidermis that produce melanin. Pigment in people's skin, it can be yellow, brown, or black. People who are darker skinned have more melanin than people who are lighter skinned. Sunlight produces more melanin because the melanin absorbs the ultraviolet rays from the sun and protects the nucleus from mutations caused by the sunlight. The dermis is your hide. It is strong and stretchy. Leather is actually made from treated dermis. There's two regions of the dermis. The first is the papillary layer. It is the upper epidermis, I'm sorry, the upper dermis. Projections into the dermis supply blood have pain and touch receptors. The patterns on your um, fingerprints are the projections or the papillae as they kind of surface near your fingertips. The second is the reticular layer. It's the deepest skin layer. 
It contains the blood vessels, sweat and oil glands, and deep pressure receptors. Both collagen and elastic fibers are found throughout the dermis. Collagen gives your skin tough, our toughness. It attracts water and keeps your skin hydrated. As you age, collagen and elastic fibers decrease in number, causing your skin to sag and wrinkle. Sebaceous glands are oil glands. They're found everywhere in your body except the palms and the soles of your feet. The ducts empty into the hair follicle. They produce sebum, which contains oils and fragmented cells. It keeps the skin soft and moist and prevents your hair from getting brittle. The sebum also has antibacterial chemicals. A blocked oil duct is a pimple. Sweat glands are also called sudoriferous glands. You have over 2.5 million sweat glands on your body. There are two types, the eccrine, which are the kinds that are most numerous and found over most of your body. They produce sweat, which contains water, salts, vitamin C, metabolic waste, lactic acid. Sweat has a pH of between four and six, which inhibits bacterial growth. Nerve endings cause sweating. On a hot day, you can lose seven liters of water, which is equivalent to about one and three quarter gallons. Apocrine sweat glands are found in your armpits and your genital areas. They also empty into the hair follicles. The secretions from these sweat glands contain fatty acids and proteins. If bacteria on your skin consume those fatty acids and proteins, they'll grow and that's what produces the smell, the bacteria eating off of that sweat. Apocrine glands do not become active until puberty. Hair and hair follicles are another part of the integumentary system. Hair for the most part is not useful anymore except for your nose hair and your eyelashes. Hair follicles produce hair. The root is in the hair follicle. The shaft of the hair pro projects from the skin surface. Hair is formed in the stratum basal epithelial cells in the matrix, which is the growth zone. The cells are pushed away and become keratinized, just like your skin cells. Erector pili are small bands of smooth muscle that connect hair to the dermal tissue. When they contract, goosebumps are caused. I gave you an article on goosebumps that you can read, but we get goosebumps when we're cold to warm us up. We also get goosebumps when we are frightened because the contraction of the erector pili causes our hair to stand up and defense mechanism. We also get goosebumps when we're moved by something emotional, and that's connected to the emotion of fear. The last part of the integumentary system are your nails. Nails are scale-like modifications of the epidermis. They're also made of keratinized cells. We are the primates are the only animals that have flat nails that cover our sensitive fingertips.